Huawei's deep connections with China's military, indictments in GE intellectual property theft, and an arresting slap. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. Huawei. It's a Chinese telecom company that wants you to know it poses no security risk because it totally has no connections to the Chinese Communist Party. Well, it turns out Huawei may actually be partly funded by the Chinese Communist military. A source speaking to the British newspaper The Times said, the CIA accused Huawei of receiving funding from China's National Security Commission, the People's Liberation Army, and a third branch of the Chinese State Intelligence Network. Okay, just because Huawei may be funded by the Chinese Communist Party's state security apparatus doesn't mean you should be worried they're building a backdoor into your phones or 5G networks so the Chinese military can sneak in. It just might make you want to think twice about using Huawei equipment. Huawei, of course, has denied all the accusations, saying the company does not comment on unsubstantiated allegations backed up by zero evidence from anonymous sources. But it really can't help that just last week, this academic paper looking at publicly available records concluded Huawei may be deemed effectively state-owned. So, how much control could the Communist Party really have over Huawei? Let's just say it's the party's way or the Huawei. Wait, no, it's both. They're the same way. Two Chinese men have been indicted for stealing trade secrets from the American conglomerate GE. Now China will know the secret to GE's success. Well, maybe not. One of the men is a former engineer at GE. He was charged last August, but the latest unsealed indictment gave us more details, that the alleged theft was conducted to benefit China, and that the Chinese regime provided financial and other support to the Chinese companies that received the stolen information. The two men are uncle and nephew. It's a family affair. Together, the pair is charged with stealing electronic files of design models, engineering drawings, and other info about the company's gas and steam turbines. Then, they allegedly coordinated with Chinese government officials to enter into research agreements with Chinese state-owned institutions to develop turbine technologies. That's basically a textbook case of how the Chinese government steals American intellectual property and then puts it in the hands of Chinese companies. Turbine theft is big business for the Chinese Communist Party. Not just gas and steam turbines, but wind too. Yes, Xi Jinping loves his windmills. The Confucius Institute. It's everyone's favorite tool of Chinese state-backed soft power propaganda. The Confucius Institute is a free Chinese language program paid for by the Chinese state and set up in schools across America and around the world. You'll learn useful Chinese phrases like Taiwan is part of China's sacred territory. And you won't learn unuseful phrases like Tiananmen Square Massacre. And that's why it's so sad that Western Kentucky University is getting rid of its Confucius Institute. Now, how will its students not learn about the Tiananmen Square Massacre? The decision was made because of U.S. legislation created last year, barring any U.S. university from using Pentagon resources for any program involving Confucius Institutes. Remember that CCTV reporter who allegedly slapped a Conservative Party member at a Hong Kong democracy event in London? Well, that CCTV reporter was charged with common assault, but she didn't show up to her court date. And now, there's a warrant out for her arrest. Which is quite a twist, since a few months ago, the charges against her had been dropped because there wasn't enough evidence. Wait, not enough evidence? Well, at some point, the investigation was opened again. This does seem like a tough case. Only a mind like Sherlock Holmes could sort it out. Taiwan is working to create a blacklist of certain tech companies and ban them from building critical infrastructure, things like water and energy supply, communications, as well as government webcams, servers, and computer software. Of course, this blacklist won't be dedicated to any country in particular, but I'm sure if there were, say, a hostile country to the north that repeatedly threatened to invade Taiwan and has tech companies known to work with that country's military, then those tech companies might be targeted. Speaking of the military, 
What about all those elderly Chinese soldiers who served their country? Well, the higher-ups want to make sure Chinese veterans don't disturb social order, such as by asking for the retirement benefits they were promised, or by protesting when they don't get them, or by protesting about how the police beat up the previous group of veterans for protesting. That's why Chinese courts have imposed heavy sentences on a group of veterans in eastern China. Eighteen of them have been sentenced to between two and six years in prison for disturbing the social order, intentional assault, or the crime of preventing officials from performing their duties. There's no way the Communist Party going after its own soldiers will ever come back to bite them. And finally, think your student loan debts are bad? At least you didn't borrow from a loan shark. Probably. Because one Chinese student did borrow from loan sharks. He borrowed about $1,000, and in a year, it ballooned to almost $450,000. Graduates in China often struggle to make ends meet. There's a lot of graduates, but not a lot of jobs. That makes loans hard to pay back. Plus, a lot of these loan sharks put on a good show of being legitimate lenders. So, for the first time ever, I actually feel better about my student loan debt. Slightly. And that's it for this week's China News Headlines. Now, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode by contributing through Patreon. Charles Walter Brook asks, Chris, what are the percentages of times you are wearing dress pants versus just shorts, jeans, or whatever while you're filming the episodes? Well, I hate to break it to you, Charles, but I actually do the whole show in the buff. I just feel more free that way. This suit, it's just CGI. By the way, thanks for filming the show, Matt. I hate this job. And thank you to all my 50 Cent Army soldiers who support China Uncensored. It's only because of your support that we've been able to cover topics that most other media don't want to, because they prefer to get advertising dollars rather than criticize the Chinese Communist Party. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.